This conference will now be recorded. Okay. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is uh, Dr. Bhavna Sharma. Um, I work as a endocrinology registrar in NHS London. Um, we're going to be covering um, OED speaking today. Um, thanks for joining us. Um, I hope you're having a nice weekend and hopefully your weekend will get, get better once you've done this session, you've learned some new things and then you can just go back to enjoying a good, nice Saturday with some very nice weather. Um, guys, um, just an important announcement. Um, Anut sir might be doing his session tomorrow. Uh, so please make sure that you are on our WhatsApp or Telegram groups just to be updated. Um, he might be he might have to um, do the session from the hospital because uh, for people who might not know he's recovering from COVID-19. Um, so we're very grateful that um, even through this difficult time, um, he is uh, still conducting um, the sessions. Um, his session will be on reading part C. If not, um, we'll cover the second part of OET speaking tomorrow. So we'll have a session tomorrow. It just depends on who does it. Um, so basically um, what we've done today is um, the mocks that we conducted over this um, one week and even before, um, there was a consistent pattern of uh, mistakes um, which uh, students were making across the board. Um, uh, be it doctors or nurses, they were making the same mistakes. So what we'll do is I try to condense the top uh, 10 mistakes on OET speaking. I'll cover five today and five in the subsequent session. So make sure that you stay tuned for the next session as well. Um, it's just that people are making the same mistakes. So there's definitely um, something which is keeping you from uh, getting your maximum score, which might just not be understanding um, what OAT wants on your OAT speaking. So just to cover that, I'm just doing, I'm troubleshooting that and I'm just covering the mistakes itself. Why we make that mistake? And if you're making that mistake, how to just come out of that vicious cycle. Okay, so we're going to do that today. Um, just just to give us a background of people who might not know, um, when we conduct our speaking sessions, we give you a feedback which is um, based on the linguistic criteria as well as the clinical communication criteria. So some of you might already know that on your OET speaking, you're actually assessed on two things, okay? You're assessed on your linguistic ability. That's basically your English. And the second part is clinical communication or communicating in medical terms or uh, providing good clinical communication. That's the second part that you scored on. So this is actually our feedback, which we do on our speaking sessions, where we grade you on your linguistic ability. And this is done by an English teacher who's trained in OAT. Um, so basically, um, in your linguistic criteria, you're assessed on intelligibility, fluency, appropriateness of language and resources of grammar and expression, okay? We'll just cover which parts we feel that most students they stumble on. So that will be covered in the second part of this session. But just to give you a background as to how the OAT assesses you. And the second part of it is clinical communication criteria. This is again a part of our uh, feedback. Um, where we basically uh, the uh, the person who does mocks with us they're graded on their clinical communication criteria and then we give you a feedback based on which section of um, the OAT speaking criteria you're scoring less on so that's your clinical communication criteria um, now let's just see what mistakes we found that the students made in uh, the previous mock sessions now guys introductions are very very important most students what they do is um they either get really nervous or um they don't take notes in the three minutes that you're given to prepare for your oet speaking it's very important 
you uh, and please understand that on your OET speaking, you're going to be in this isolated room. Um, there will be one person who's sitting in front of you who doesn't really look like a patient, um, but you are supposed to si simulate being in a hospital ward or a clinic and the patient in front of you has to simulate being a patient or a patient's relative. Now, when you're very, very nervous, people tend to forget who the person in front of them is, where they are and who they actually are playing, okay? So when you see your role play card and you have your three minutes to prepare, it's very, very important um, that you note down three things, which is where are you? So what's the setting? So in the role play card, you can see that this was a hospital. So some students, they made the mistake um, and they said, what brings you here today? Or they said things like, um, oh, oh, why have you come to the clinic today? And, or, or they ask, uh, what's the main issue that you came to us today? So remember, because this is a hospital ward and the patient is already there. So if you ask them questions like, what brings you to the hospital today? That will be incorrect. And then they cut down your marks. So simple things uh, which are quite important that you understand and that you uh, get a sense of when you're preparing initially and you have your three minutes. Very, very important and very, very common mistake on our mocks. Um, you need to understand who you are, okay? So sometimes um, people, um, they make this mistake. So in the, on the candidate card, it says that you're a doctor in a hospital. What some people do, because they've just memorized that, they um, uh, they introduce themselves as, um, hello, I'm the GP working here. So GP is a different thing, okay? So you need to know who exactly you are and how you'll introduce yourself. These are silly mistakes that you shouldn't be losing marks out on. And all, all, all of you are trained doctors and trained nurses and making silly mistakes like this is just embarrassing. Um, so just don't do that. So you need to understand um, where you are, who are you? And the third thing, which is also quite important is who is the interlocutor? Sometimes what, what the OAT does is um, the person in front of you isn't the actual patient, it's a patient's relative. And uh, what students do in that case, a very common mistake that they do is they ask, how are you feeling? Or are you feeling well now? Or something like, uh, oh, we're discharging you today. And then the person asks, um, doctor, I'm not actually uh, the patient. I am his father or I'm um, her mother. So that's a bit that's a bit embarrassing. And if that happens, and you're in this strange scenario where someone is grading your English, you're already nervous about it. So making these mistakes, it just sets things off in a very wrong way, okay? So you get nervous, you get flustered, and then the whole OET speaking scenario starts to go downhill right from the start, okay? If you look at the clinical communication criteria, the first point is actually um, indicators of relationship building. So initiating the interaction appropriately is extremely important and you're getting graded for it, okay? So it's very important that you understand these three things before you begin your OAT speaking. Okay. So SD, um, if a patient is in a hospital or a ward. Um, and for example, if you look at the role play, which we've um, tried to illustrate today, um, it says that this patient is getting discharged, okay? So a good way to begin that, rather than asking how may I help you, um, you should say that, um, good morning, my name is, um, Dr. Bhavna Sharma. I'm a doctor working in this ward. Um, I'm, I just come here because I just wanted to discuss your discharge today. Um, before I start, 
how can I help you? So you can you can do that, but just remember that you need to insert the fact that the patient is getting discharged. If you just start with how may I help you or how you're feeling, it doesn't really sound very, very appropriate. If But what is completely wrong is what lots of people do because they've memorized this, they often ask uh, what brings you to the hospital today. So if someone comes to your clinic, then that's fine. Um, you should probably say that what brings you to the clinic today. But if the patient is already in the hospital, if you say that, that's wrong English. So that's the only point um, which I wanted to just explain that do not tell people that thanks for coming into the hospital or uh, thanks for coming um, to this ward because they're already in the ward for a long period of time. So you need to understand that. You need to understand where you are, who are you, who is the interlocutor, and one more thing, at what point of admission are they on? So are they, get, are they getting admitted today? Then you can ask what brought you to the hospital today because they're getting admitted that day. If they're getting discharged, you just ask them that I'm just going to help you out with your discharge today. Is there something in particular that you want to ask before we start? Okay. So introduction, guys. Very, very common mistake. Um, but hopefully, after this session, uh, everyone is not going to be making that mistake. The second thing. Lots of people, they struggle with this. Um, guys, uh, remember when we looked at our scoring criteria on the OET speaking, there was linguistic criteria and there was clinical communication criteria. There was nothing which stated that they're going to evaluate your medical knowledge. So when we had this scenario, when we did our mock on this scenario, uh, what lots of people did is that um, uh, if you read through the scenario, it's basically about someone who's been non-compliant with their diabetes medications and they were admitted with diabetic ketoacidosis. Their diabetic ketoacidosis has um, resolved and now they're going home. So lots of doctors, um, they made this mistake as to they started asking, um, uh, wh why were you admitted to the hospital? Uh, what symptoms were you having before getting admitted? Did you have any vomiting? Did you have any fever? Uh, were you feeling unwell, any abdominal pain? So they basically started asking the history of diabetic ketoacidosis, but that wasn't actually your task. So what, what that will do is one, you won't be able to complete your task points and they won't be able to evaluate you on your task points. And the second thing is that um, you're probably going to run out of time. Okay, so lots of people who did this um, as to they started taking a history, um, they lost out on a lot of points because they ran over time. So they were finishing at nine minutes or 10 minutes. So that's not really appropriate on your OET speaking. And it's just something which can be avoided. So guys, Remember that you're not supposed to take a history on OAT speaking. All right. Um, Irene, instead of saying, are you comfortable now? That's a bit strange um, sentence to use. Um, you can ask, how are you feeling today? But are you comfortable now is a strange sentence. Um, it basically, you should use, are you comfortable now is when the patient came in with lots of, um, has a lot of pain and you give them painkillers, then you can ask them, are you feeling comfortable now? Um, at the time of discharge, I would not ask that, okay? So that's, that's one thing which is quite important, not taking a history. Um, some people, if, they, if, you, if you think that you struggle with that, um, what I would do is when you have your initial three minutes to prepare, just highlight um, the task points, okay? For example, in this uh, particular role play, I would highlight that I have to explain diagnosis. So diagnosis of diabetic ketoacidosis, so I have to explain that. So I'm gonna underline explain diagnosis. And then it says explain follow-up. So just, uh, I would underline that. 
then there's something about medication compliance so i would underline that so i would highlight the bold points as to what i'm supposed to cover in this task so that i don't um, i don't waver and i don't start asking things or getting myself into trouble by asking things which aren't a part of my task okay so very important um that we stick to task points and we note down or highlight the important task points so this is a mistake that people make but hopefully we will not make it now all right the third point um before we proceed guys i just want to get a consensus from the room um, is there someone who uh, did make the mistake of taking a history or uh, proper introductions if you did please type in yes because that will help uh, um, us get a sense of um, what the room is like or what this meeting is like and what kind of audience we have um, usually um, senior doctors they often struggle uh, with this um, taking a history mistake so if 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 we've got a lot of senior doctors um in this meeting then probably they would uh, they would feel that they made this mistake so just be careful um don't do it in the future the second point or the third point is not expressing enough grammar so guys uh, when we looked at the linguistic criteria we did see um that you are graded on resources of grammar and expression and fluency so what some people do is that when they're speaking to someone they use a lot of short phrases a common one which people do is you know so you know this happens you know diabetic ketoacidosis is a very serious disease you know we need to talk about your medication compliance so using a lot of these short phrases it brings down your marks because on your oet speaking the examiners are looking for full sentences they're looking for uh, proper sentences which have a beginning and an end so repeating you know you know you know again and again is just going to create a lot of problems and you would lose out on marks on grammar and expression sd um guys if you're able to hear me please type in yes because some people are complaining they can't hear us okay all right so one thing um, which a lot of people struggle with is uh, not being able to express enough grammar. So one thing which can help you out is lots of people, if they've got time left at the end, they summarize the whole scenario, okay? Because it's, it's easier to do that. When you're talking to someone, um, we tend to use a lot of short phrases. That's just the way the human brain works. But if you want to summarize everything at the end, for example, I've spoken, um, I've, uh, I've spoken to um, this patient. They've told me about their uh, diabetic ketoacidosis. They've asked me about what it means, and they've, I've explained the follow-up plan, and they've said, "Okay, we'll follow up and we'll uh, comply with our medications." What I would do is at the very end, if I've got some time left, I would summarize the whole thing and then I use all proper sentences because now it's just me talking. And when it's just me talking, then I'm able to form full sentences because it's a lecture. Lecture is actually easier for doctors and nurses rather than a two-way discussion. So I can then say, um, thank you, Ms. Jones, for speaking to me. Um, so just to summarize our discussion uh, today we talked about um, your discharge um, we talked about um, you getting admitted with diabetic ketoacidosis i explained to you what diabetic ketoacidosis means which is just an increase in the acid levels of the blood um, because there is a lot of sugar in the blood 
Um, we talked about your follow up plan. Uh, we talked about that you definitely need to comply with your medications now to ensure that you don't get readmitted with a similar complaint. Um, you asked me certain questions about your insulin therapy, which I explained. Um, we talked about lifestyle management and we talked about um, and, and we did talk about exercise and dietary compliance. Um, is there anything that you would like to ask me? So, so in that way, I was just reading out of the task, but I was summarizing everything and I was using full sentences. So even if I was using short phrases at the beginning, like, mm -hmm, I know, okay, 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 lots of times. Now, because I've summarized it, my examiner knows that I, I did solve all the linguistic criteria. I, I was fluent, I, it was intelligible, and I was using proper uh, so, uh, resources of grammar and expression. So that's going to bring my linguistic criteria score up. So very important mistake um, that people make on their OAT speaking. And they often don't really realize why they failed OAT speaking. But it's just because the way that they were taking a history is the way that normal doctors and nurses do take history in daily life by just uh, letting the patient talk and just facilitating that. But because it's the OAT, you can cheat a little by summarizing at the end. So that's another common mistake on the mocks that we conducted and on real OAT as well. Okay, blank spaces. Lots of people, they do that um, when they're in a nervous situation, they're giving this very strange English exam or a medical exam. They don't really know. They get quite confused and there are a lot of blank spaces when they're talking or they just completely go blank or their mind goes blank and then they lose out on marks for fluency. Um, how do we solve that? Is um, what lots of people they try to do is that um, they write down the sentences that they would like to use um, on their OET speaking. Because when you're preparing and you're just concentrating in your mind, you're a little less nervous. So you can make full sentences then. And then you can write down those sentences in the three minutes that you get to prepare. So for example, if I'm supposed to explain about diabetic ketoacidosis and that's my main task point, I would probably make sentences and write down the sentences as to how I would explain diabetic ketoacidosis. Guys, remember, this is an English exam and not a medical exam. So even if you give a wrong explanation for diabetic ketoacidosis, um, for example, um, if for diabetic ketoacidosis, um, you say that, um, let me just explain diabetic ketoacidosis. Um, this is a disorder of the blood, um, which makes your body extremely weak. And sometimes people may even become comatose. So everything's wrong. But because it's an English sentence and a full sentence and you did follow your task point by telling the person about diabetic ketoacidosis, no one's going to cut your marks. Lots of people, what they do is when, when they're doing the actual OAT speaking task, they try to start thinking medically. Okay, they, they go back to their medical school and then they think about, okay, what should I tell them? What would be the most medically accurate explanation? But guys, cheat on this exam a little bit. You can give out medically inaccurate information. Okay? So instead of going completely blank, just say whatever you want, but in proper English, and you'll score marks in fluency. The thing is that if your mind goes blank, you don't say anything, and there's a strange person sitting in front of you, which is the interlocutor, it's only going to make you extremely nervous. And doctors and nurses who've got very good English, when they get nervous or when they get confused, they tend to um, start making gram uh, grammatical errors as well. This happens to everyone. You might have noticed that sometimes um, when you're speaking to someone who's your senior 
or you're, you're in an exam situation and your, your um, examiner is in front of you, you start making mistakes because it's just the nerves. But don't be nervous on your OET speaking. Remember, it's only an English exam. It's not a real patient who needs real information. Giving them medically inaccurate information is completely fine. So that's your cheat for OET speaking. So blank spaces, please avoid them. Okay. Now, another mistake that lots of students did on our mock test was active listening. So what active listening basically means that when you're listening to someone, you're responding to them. What some people do is like you're sitting in a lecture and someone's droning about OAT speaking. Uh, what you do is that your mind sort of switches off and you're not really listening. Now, what that might do is if I then ask you a question or if I, um, for example, um, if this was a role play, what one student did was um, because they were thinking about diabetic ketoacidosis and how they're going to explain it, um, the interlocutor said that um, it's okay, doctor, I don't want to know about diabetic ketoacidosis, I'm a nurse. But because that person was still thinking about how they're going to explain diabetic ketoacidosis, they, um, they, for, they didn't listen to the fact that this person had mentioned about um, being a nurse and not needing to know. And they lost out on, on marks, okay? And they made their life difficult. So listen to what your interlocutor is saying. What I often tell students to do is um, when you're preparing for your OET speaking, try and practice with someone else or you can try and try do our uh, teach your mock test because you, if you're practicing alone, you don't get used to someone sitting in front of you and asking you questions or throwing up surprises. So that's extremely important that you practice your OET speaking with someone else. And that's how you develop these skills of active listening. So very, very important. Sometimes um, when the patient is talking, they might use some terms which are a little bit unclear sometimes. I'll try and cover that in our subsequent sessions. One example of this is um, that Patients often use this language that uh, the pain is not too bad, okay? But if you're not really listening properly, um, what you would listen to is if I, if I say, uh, it's okay, doctor, my pain isn't too bad. If you're not listening properly, you might hear pain bad, okay? And then you say, oh my God, is your pain very bad? Let me do something about it. So active listening and actually listening to your patient carefully is going to solve that problem. And when you're listening to someone and they give out things like, oh, doctor, that's so sad. Oh, doctor, I don't really feel very, very uh, good about this. Or, or doctor, or, or whatever you're explaining about diabetic ketoacidosis is making me extremely anxious. If I say that, for example, I'm the patient and I say, oh, doctor, this discussion about diabetic ketoacidosis is making me extremely anxious. And then you keep talking about diabetic ketoacidosis and how it increases the acid levels and how it's about sugar control. And you didn't really listen to me talking about my anxiety. You're going to lose out on marks for sympathy and empathy. Okay, So very, very important that you listen to the patient answer their questions. If they express an emotion, you answer that emotion and you listen properly for some terms which are a little unclear sometimes. So very common mistake, but hopefully because you guys have attended this short session, you should be able to solve this. Okay, so guys, this was a very, very short session today which covered um, OAT speaking and the common mistakes which students conducted in our mock session um, over the previous weeks. Guys, if you want to enroll for our OAT speaking, 
um, please visit our website, which is www.teachacademy.com. Um, you can also text the WhatsApp number provided or mail us at teacheracademy at gmail.com. Um, we cover all of these. All of these things are covered by our speaking sessions, which are conducted by a doctor or a nurse, depending upon your profession, as well as an English teacher who assesses you on the linguistic criteria. And all the mistakes that you make on your OET speaking, rather than just giving you a feedback on paper, we give you live feedback. We give you a study plan that you can follow, which helps you avoid all of these common mistakes. You might have noticed that you might be making this mistake on your actual OET speaking. So just try and enroll for our speaking mocks. It's really, really beneficial. And lots of our students have had extremely positive results by enrolling in Teach Your Academy speaking mocks. So uh, if you have any questions, please type into the chat window. Otherwise, we'll wrap up today's session. SD wants to ask uh, if role play card is in clinic is it right to start with an in the introduction yes sd you're always supposed to introduce yourself you're supposed to say that hello my name is dr this or my um i am a, a nurse uh, and my name is this and then you're supposed to say um can i ask your name or your date of birth and then you have to say what brings you to our clinic today even if you're in a clinic you are still supposed to ask your patient's identity and your identity you're supposed to explain and you're supposed to just introduce uh, what the topic of conversation will be be it a discharge be it um, your uh, uh, clinic uh, visit monica if you mean expressions facial expressions no facial expressions aren't that important uh, but if if the patient is expressing emotions or they're saying i'm feeling anxious i'm feeling sad i'm feeling bad then you're supposed to um, address that because that's sympathy and empathy which is understanding your patient's emotions Dr. Uh, Aaron has asked, okay. So Dr. Aaron has asked, first task was to initiate discussion regarding diagnosis. How can we start after introduction? So Aaron, the way I would conduct this is that I would say that, um, um, hello, um, my name is Dr. Bhavna Sharma. I'm a ward doctor working in this hospital. Um, we are here to discuss um, your diagnosis. Um, before we start, can I just confirm your name and date of birth? Is that all right? Or, um, hello, my name is Dr. Bhavna Sharma. I work as a ward doctor in this um, hospital. Um, I've just been asked to discuss regarding your discharge um, today. Before I start, can I just please confirm your name and date of birth? So if you say confirm name and date of birth, is that slightly better because that means that you might already know the patient, but you're confirming their details because you want to match the details to your task. So SD, if you're introducing yourself, you have to say, I am Dr. Smith, and then you stop. I am the general practitioner working in this practice, or I am a general practitioner working in this clinic. So remember, SD, please do not miss your articles. Okay. So, Aiden, if you've understood that, or SD, if you've understood that, uh, please type in yes. Okay. Um, how may I address you is fine. You can say, um, hello, um, my name is Dr. Bhavna Sharma. 
I work as a GP um, in this clinic. Um, how may I address you? Okay. Um, guys, if you have any questions, just type into the chat window. Otherwise, we'll wrap up today's session. Okay. All right. That's very good. Um, lots of um, good points that we covered. Guys, if you want to enroll in our speaking mocks, please um, visit our website. We do have some sessions available this week. Um, but just make sure that you keep practicing. And even if you're practicing alone, try and record your voice and hear it back so that then you're able to assess the way that you're talking, whether you are fluent, whether you are using full sentences, whether someone else should be able to understand um, what you're saying. When you're talking about an emergency situation, um, I would say that um, you would introduce yourself as, rather than saying good morning, I would avoid that. I would say, hi, my name is Dr. Bhavna Sharma. I'm a doctor working in the emergency department today. Um, just before we start, um, can I please confirm your name and date of birth? Because ST, in that case, even if it's an emergency situation, you're still supposed to introduce yourself. There are marks for introduction. Remember, this is not real life. Your patient isn't uh, very, very sick, okay? Um, you have to tick the points that the OET speaking is assessing, okay? Even in an emergency situation, do um, address uh, your patient properly introduce yourself properly. Um, we did an online session on top mistakes in OET writing, Hasina and Erin. Uh, that also last week, I tried to cover the top 10 mistakes in OET writing, and we do conduct regular sessions on OET writing. Um, if you visit our YouTube channel, which is by the same name as on the screen, which is Teach Your Academy, you should be able to get all our um, previous writing sessions. I do writing sessions quite regularly. And uh, Manut sir, who is our grammar expert, he does writing sessions on the grammar topics on OAT writing. So uh, do visit our YouTube channel. It should be extremely helpful. Um, Tina Moore, it's important that you stick to the task points. It not, it's not necessary to finish all of them. Hasina has asked just three questions about writing any other subtest. Hasina, I didn't really understand your question. Um, if you if you could just please elaborate. Guys, just make sure um, on your speaking, you use the three minutes quite well, okay? Because lots of people, uh, they think that they just read the task and then they waste their time looking elsewhere um, when they're doing their OET speaking. The three minutes are actually extremely important and you can bring up your scores if you develop this habit of just making notes and highlighting your case points when you're doing your OAT speaking. So extremely important that we do that, okay? All right. Guys, if you have any questions, just keep typing into the chat window. Otherwise, we'll wrap up today's session. Okay. All right. We're going to wrap up now. Um, this will be uploaded on YouTube in case you want to go back and just um, revise. Um, just make sure, guys, that um, the mistakes that we covered today, if you want to do, some people do like to do that, um, try and do uh, what you can do. You can take a screenshot of the task that we gave. And then um, what you can do is you can try and practice this task um, in front of a mirror or try and record this. And then you look for the common mistakes which happen and see if you're making them. It should be an extremely beneficial exercise that you can do after today's session. Nisha, it's not necessary to summarize every time 
but what i advise people is if you've got time left at the end of your oet speaking rather than sitting in silence in front of the examiner it's an extremely beneficial practice that you summarize the whole conversation because like i mentioned if you're not using proper english sentences they won't be able to give you good marks on oet speaking and when you summarize it becomes easier to start using full sentences but if you've ran out of time and you've not summarized nisha then it's uh, you shouldn't get scared that you missed out on something it's just something which brings up your score hasina if you have any questions you can ask them now for any sub test on oet writing i'm uh, on o, or on oet including writing or speaking or listening or reading i'm happy to answer them uh, we usually begin our session about 15 minutes prior to the start time so if you have any questions you can ask them on uh, before the actual session starts okay we're happy to answer all questions related to all sub tests dr erin i didn't really understand your question you sh you said how should approach in details so i didn't really understand that Doctor Aiden, what I would suggest, if you want sources for practice, you always start with your um, official OAT um, speaking practices. And uh, if you want to further practice your sessions or get a score for yourself, then you can enroll for um, Teacher Academy's um, speaking mocks. Monica. if you're confused about computer based versus paper based test i've actually done like a full session on online oet and i've covered each and every sub test on oet and how the computer based test um might be better for some people and the paper based test might be uh, easy for some people it just depends on your skill set so if you go to our youtube channel teach your academy just look for the session on online oet and deciding whether it works for you and assess yourself um i've also provided some links for some typing practice if um you feel you want to do the computer based test so if you go to our youtube channel um you should be able to decide um which type of um session works for you okay Asina has asked for some tasks in speaking. They mentioned that the patient is already familiar with us. So for that, how to start speaking, guys? Some people do this. Um, is that when you have your three minutes to prepare, you can actually ask the interlocutor what their name is or how they would like to be addressed during the speaking mock. So then, if they tell you, okay, you can call me. For example, you can call me June. Okay. um you can start your speaking session by then saying hello um my name is uh, dr hasina i work as a doctor um in this ward um can i just confirm your uh, name and uh, date of birth please june or oh, june can i please confirm your full name and date of birth before we start or some people they use this sentence quite a lot they say um before we start uh i already know that your name is june but just as a routine procedure can i please confirm your name and date of birth so you can just mention that that we're just trying to do it as a routine procedure or you can say that hi june uh, thanks for seeing me again today before i start can i please just confirm your uh, full name and date of birth so that i can compare it to my notes so lots of people try and go around the fact that they might already be familiar with the patient in this way all right so we're going to wrap up this um, session today guys if you still have any questions um what we'll do um uh, is that we'll cover them tomorrow before starting the session as well 
someone has asked some candidates complain that the interlocutor interrupts in between if your interlocutor is interrupting you please stop and let them talk okay um, rather than remember even if this was real life and your patient was interrupting you your patient is important you are not important the main focus should be the patient and their health if they're uh, interrupting you stop talking give them time to complete their sentence if they're talking for a long time or they they say something before starting on your lecture again you can ask them thank you for saying that is there anything you would like to add before i start hasina your focus is not on finishing the task point it is on listening to the interlocutor and understanding their english and answering in your english that's the focus of oet speaking you have 5 minutes that's fine but uh, the that's not an exact uh, time limit it can be in between 5 and 8 minutes it just depends but if during those 5 minutes or during those 8 minutes you give them a lecture for 7 minutes they're not able to ask any questions um then you're not going to score very well because all of your clinical communication criteria relationship building information gathering everything you're going to score very poorly on okay please don't get nervous about the time limit the time limit is more than enough to cover the task points given in oet speaking so don't worry about it okay all right um if if anyone else has any questions um we'll start tomorrow session a bit early and uh, if you have any questions you can just ask them there uh, ask them uh, during that time um you can ask any questions um about online oet about reading listening speaking writing anything you want to ask you can ask uh, prior to tomorrow's session all right guys we're going to wrap up today's session if you're interested in us please visit our website and do enroll for our writing and speaking chats all right that's the end for today i hope you guys have um have a nice weekend um hasina the mock test is personalized and is one to one um so we schedule it according to your requirements and on the availability of our uh, doctors so um you can schedule the mock test at any time during this week we'll just let you know um if you have any questions about uh, the availability of the dates and times that we have um you can either whatsapp the number on the screen or you can text um, dr prashant on the number provided and he will be able to guide you through everything so you can text this number which is given on the screen um if you want to find out further about our mock test and uh, if you want to schedule a speaking mock with us all right that's the end of today's session um guys keep practicing um keep studying and uh, hopefully um we see you um if you want to uh, you can enroll for writing mocks as well just text the number provided um dr prashant will be able to answer all of your questions about our writing as well as speaking mocks all right guys just take care stay safe and uh, keep practicing and i hope to see you working with us in the nhs very very soon good luck